Hello everyone. It's an absolute privilege to be presenting my Nuffield Farming Scholarship Report in my home county of Devon on leading your farm to success. As you'll see from my recent GQ magazine photo shoot, uh, we have sheep and also cattle um, on our farm. And we also overlook the village of Hemioc where the Young Farmers Movement first started. Leadership is a well studied and communicated topic. However, it is underdeveloped within agriculture. So this led me to developing my own definition. Leadership is knowing yourself and others to the point in which people are willingly influenced towards a common goal. I believe each and every one of you here can take a lead, and I'm gonna tell you why. On my travels, I went for seven months across four continents and 12 countries, including a global focus programme. Thanks to my sponsors, the Worshipful Company of Farmers, before I even set on a plane, I had my most significant experience um, meeting senior leaders from the RAF and the Army. In particular, RAF Air Chief Marshal Sir Michael Graydon, who believed that when you treat people as human beings, that is leadership. Everything else is just management. Group Captain um, Mark Lorman Hughes um, and also Lord Danat talked about their wraparound culture, so supporting the individual, supporting their family so they can bring their best, best self uh, to the task. Leadership is knowing yourself. Are you ready for the shock of your life? I definitely wasn't in September 2021. Due to a personal relationship breakdown, I went into chronic depression. From that moment, as part of my turnaround, I created a mental health toolkit, which included uh, journaling and also walking. And I was also incredibly lucky to have close family and friends that I could talk to. But I thought, wouldn't it be terrible if I didn't have that? So I wrote a poem called Walk With Me, in order to create a campaign to break the stigma around mental health and create a safe place for people to talk. Walk with me. Walk with me if you're feeling alone. Walk with me if you need to pick up the phone. Walk with me if you think you're having a better day, but actually you're worried about the next dark time. Walk with me if you feel like you've got amazing friends and family who are worried about you and give you incredible support. Walk with me if actually you don't want to feel nervous about talking about your mental health and you just want to make it normal. Walk, walk, walk with me. We need to make a change. Now is the time to change the whole culture of talking about mental health. One year on, the Walk With Me campaign is now a global force for good. Thanks to the Nuffield community, um, the Do More Agricultural Foundation in Canada got in contact with us and said they loved the idea and they wanted to get behind it for World Mental Health Day. And look what we've achieved. People all over the world walking, talking, posting videos, setting the example of how we can really make a difference. And I think that self-awareness, that personal leadership is something that is highly relevant, ensuring that we bring our best self to each and every day. Leadership is knowing your team. And I, I had a wonderful time visiting Brazil, fellow Nuffield scholar Vanessa and her family business, Grupo Morena. They had 9,000 hectares with 9,000 cattle and combinable crops. But what was most impressive is they had great place to work status and international accreditation, not just for agriculture. They understood the importance of caring for people and creating a great environment in order to achieve success in their business. They went the extra mile in providing accommodation, nutritious, nutritious food and many other benefits. They also adopted the Kaizen Continuous Improvement 5S's um, approach to ensure a clean and safe place to work. Leadership is knowing your community. When I went to Africa, 
it soon became aware that it's no more of a sobering thought that if you take one step wrong that the government can take your land away. When I was in Kenya, I met uh, Chris and Sarah Flowers. Um, they have the largest um, avocado and academia business in Kenya. And they're very aware of their social responsibility. They employ 4,000 people. And what they do, they have an international market for their avocados, but they also provide a market for small-scale producers. Um, and they also even grow, can you believe it, 600 hectares of grassland specifically for local small-scale livestock farmers to produce hay for their livestock. Um, on, on the near side here, I caught up with my old Harper friend, Buzz Robertson, at Katima Farms. They have combinable crops and floriculture. And they too employ a lot of people. But what was interesting, if you look at the middle photo, large-scale farm, they provided trial, trial plots and example knowledge transfer areas for many, many small-scale farmers to learn about conservation agriculture. I also visited Rwanda, which has made a huge transformation, and they're aiming to be the Singapore of Africa. But the business that I visited, Sina Gerard, um, named as of the founder, uh, was incredible. Uh, it started from really humble beginnings, from a small-scale fruit and vegetable producer who decided to add value and create his own juices. Fast forward to now, it's a national treasure, sourcing from 3,000 small-scale farms. But Sina Gerard understood the importance of never forgetting where you come from and also the importance of bringing your community with you because actually, if something goes wrong, you need that kind of support and at the same time, if you need to expand. Like Emily, I also went for a glass of wine with Tom Merwin in, in California. But our conversation was a little bit different. Tom was very passionate about his experience on the California Agricultural Leadership Programme. He told me lots of things, but his number one thing was how he felt that it was bestowed on him to be a better leader in his community. And the prime example was when I, I well, quite awkwardly as a, as a British person, enjoyed Independence Day, 4th of July, which the farmers had organised uh, in their local town. So how do we make this practical? You know, what could I do now? What could I actually go out and do in the break? Well, actually, to start off with as a farm, I think something's really important to identify the people and organisations that influence your business. And maybe draw this simple diagram here. And actually, where could you put some of these people or organisations? Potentially, you know, who would you keep satisfied? Maybe your customer. Who would you manage closely? Your contractor. Who, who would you monitor? Perhaps your local council. And who would you keep informed? Your accountant. But there are many, many others that you can put in those boxes. But that's a really simple exercise to start to think about the relationship that you need with those people and those organisations. I also discovered leadership without authority. And to be honest, agriculture has been an expert in this for a long term, long time. Entrepreneurship, really sort of taking a lead from grassroots. And I saw that example in Zimbabwe when I had the privilege of meeting Alan Savory, one of the founders of the regenerative agriculture movement. And that is a prime example. It's the same with the Groundswell event, where it's individuals from the ground up actually really wanting to, to make a difference. You know, I find that quite inspiring. I also went to visit my fellow Nuffield scholar, Judith DeVore in the Netherlands, and she was telling me about the additional pressure that they're under from an environmental point of view. And they were concerned about the influence they were having. With no previous experience in politics, they set up their own political party and got elected and are actually making some significant changes. So what does leadership mean to you? It was fascinating to interview so, so many people and find out what they find as really important uh, in what they look for for a leader. For me, listening is really important. And then taking action. But I think that's glued together by trust. So to my recommendations. Farmers must prioritise their own physical and mental health in order to build resilience. Leaders must role model a caring attitude and cultivate a strong support network for themselves and their team. Farmers need to create and action their own stakeholder risk management plan that identifies key people or organisations that impact their business. 
Farmers are encouraged to run a personality assessment on themselves, their team, and even their family. Use the insights to be more curious, shape ways of working, and improve the culture of the business. Farmers must aspire to be a great place to, farms must aspire to be a great place to work, to significantly improve their reputation, employee retention, and recruitment prospects. There is a collective responsibility for everyone in the supply chain to take a lead, whether on farm, in a food business, or an allied organization, in order to work together in a mutually beneficial way. I have had a transformational experience during my Nuffield scholarship. I'd like to thank everyone that has hosted me and given their time and their thoughts. It's been, it's been amazing. I would like to thank my sponsors, the Worshipful Company of Farmers in Savills. I would like to thank the Nuffield community, particularly the 2021 group, and my mentor, Jim Beard. I would like to thank Muller for the flexibility that they've given me. And I would like to thank my really close family and friends for taking me every step of the way. So start today to lead your farm to success by getting to know yourself, your team and com your community. Thank you very much.